how are we nearing the end of another year already? I'm not sure if this was actually 2022 or the third year of 2020, but either way, we're standing on the edge of a year behind us and the next one staring us down, full of all its potential and hope. I wanna invite you, City Life, to take a journey with me as we reflect on the goodness and faithfulness of God over this past year. By His grace, and through your generosity, we have so much to celebrate. And it's hard to believe all of this happened in just one year. Let's take a journey. We're gonna start, of course, in January. Every year, we do a prayer and fast with every nation. And all of our churches worldwide come together to pray, to fast, to believe. And this last year, we had our Abide prayer and fasting consecration week. And it was so powerful as it always is. We start the year this way and it really sets a precedence for the rest of the year. With that, also in January, we were able to supply coats for Cole, our school that we have adopted as a church that's near us that we get to be in and have people go in to volunteer to help out. Many of you brought coats, gave money, and it was such a great thing to be able to do. We also get to tell you again about City Music, our team that has been producing amazing worship songs straight from our house. They produce an awake EP of several songs that you can listen to even right now. We were able to bring in Peter Dusan, one of our amazing evangelists with Every Nation, and he came and did an Engage 77 training where we spent 77 minutes talking about how to do evangelism in a very practical way. And then we were able to go on the campus of University of Houston to share the gospel with many students. We also launched again our Leadership 215. If you're not familiar with this, this is our Bible-based program that we allow people to dive deeper into Scripture and bring people in to subjects like hermeneutics and Old Testament survey. New Testament is a great thing. Many people came and we're excited to continue to do this every year. In February, we started the month with our Campus Sunday. This is our time, as you know, where you get to promote campus ministry. And then, of course, we also had at the end of the month, the ENC Conference. We are a church-based campus ministry, so we love platforming and championing our campus ministry and what they're doing on the campuses in Houston, Texas. We were able to also have baptisms in February, and it's always a great time to be able to watch people be buried with Christ and raised to walk in newness of life. We started our equip nights, which was eight weeks starting in February on Wednesday nights where people came and did different classes like spiritual disciplines, prayer, marriage. We were able to offer these things and have eight weeks to gather people and scatter them into equip classes to grow more in Christ. We were also able to have a wonderful baby dedication. We had not had one for a while with COVID and everything going on. So we were able to dedicate many of our babies to the Lord in February. Our foundations class kicked off as we continue to offer biblical foundations and challenge people to go through the purple book. And we did one of our rap sessions on the subject of class to continue to have conversations and dialogue as a church. March was a big month for us. We started with a night of worship with the theme Abide. And we always encourage our church to come and worship with us. And God moves incredibly at those every time. Our church work day also, where we worked on our building and rebranding the building with our new logo. We loved our old logo and identity, but our new logo really shows even downtown Houston in the streets and our call to go into all of Houston to make disciples. The Generations campaign also launched in March. And this was our campaign to give you the vision for our building and what we want to do to create a place for our children and youth for the next generation where we can see God move in an amazing way. Our Newcomers Lunch relaunched as well in March, which we are so excited about. This is our time for new people to come, have lunch, us get to know them, as we have so many people that are coming to our church each month. Every year when April comes upon us, it is Easter month. And the way we prepare for it 
is we start with our journey to the cross. We were able to bring this back after two years off because of COVID. We brought back our journey to the cross, used our new building that we call Building B, and we're able to see hundreds of people come in and walk through and experience what Christ experienced, leading up to our Good Friday service and an amazing Easter service we had that morning. We also launched our Prayer 101 for that month where we had the amazing, the awesome, the fantastic Aisha Darwish and Henry Emmerich help continue to teach our Prayer 101 and help people learn how to pray. We also had our Relational Foundations. This was our first ever Relational Foundations where we've encouraged and tried to spark and ignite the understanding that as a diverse church, we've got to come together and learn how to have good relationships with one another. In June and starting in the summer, we had our very first light conference. This was our creative conference where we brought different churches around every nation to talk about the value of creativity and how God wants to use it like salt and light in our culture. Like we do at the beginning of every summer, we launch a book study and this summer we launched Genesis part one. And it's been an amazing time to be able to go Genesis chapter one all the way till chapter 23 at the end of the summer. We had our City Kids Jam with amazing volunteers. We love you so much. And our kids that did a great job singing and worshiping and leading us into worship while we joined them is such a great time. Our YAM, our young adult ministry, did a barbecue and they've been doing just great things together as they're building community with one another. And as they say, figuring it out. In July, we had our youth camp where we took kids all the way out to New Mexico. Thank you so much parents for trusting us with that. And many of our youth got to experience with other Every Nation youth in our region, a great camp. We launched the International Friendship Program where many of you signed up to pick up an international student from the airport, bring them in. Many of you host international students and we're so thankful for your generosity in doing that and thankful for George Chow and his leadership at U of H. The month of August always comes in a fury as everything's starting to gear back. So we had our back to school transitions for our kids that are going from one grade to another. We also had our campus Sunday once again, as we do every fall and spring. And we were able to launch our family appreciation night where we had dinner, we had a free book, we had some encouragement, and we just had a great time with bubbles and everything to appreciate our families, to gather them and love on our kids and pray for our parents. As we continue to go into Colon, we were able to have a market day there and a few of our people were able to go in and serve that school again as we're continuing to do throughout the year. As September came upon us, we had our Engage 77 training again for the second time. We had the first one in January, now in September. And again, we had a wonderful time being able to go on U of H and minister to students. We launched our Old Testament survey class because we're really passionate about helping people understand the Bible. We're so thankful for people like Quan that lead that and many of our teachers that continue to push us and our people into understanding and reading the Bible. We had our leadership prayer and fast. Many of you guys didn't know about this, but we challenged a mid-year prayer and fast to our leadership team of about 75 people. And we all prayed for you, uh, for our church, for what God is doing. And next year, you'll hear more about this as we continue to do our mid-year fast in the fall. We started our gospel and series where we hit the gospel and mental health, sexuality, race, and war, along with rap sessions, where we came along and had dialogue and great conversations together to be able to discover how does the gospel speak into these cultural issues. We began October with a night of worship. We're always thankful when God shows up, when you show up and we get to worship him together. Many of you were ministered to and it was a great time. With that, we had baptisms. We had about seven people get baptized and commit themselves with a public confession of faith. 
City Music again released a single called Sweet Mercy that many of you hopefully are singing now and enjoying even in your home as you click on Apple Music. Our young adult ministry had their very first retreat that they have been planning. They were able to get away, get to know one another and love on God. And I've heard amazing things about it, even though I am not a young adult anymore. We're thankful for our leaders and all they're doing with that. ENC had their date night for all of our church to be able to come in and drop your kid off to help support them, raise some funds for their conference and bless all of our parents. And they'll continue to do that coming up real soon. In November, we launched our Relational Foundations Intensive. And again, this second time that we've done it this year, we are so excited about how you can get involved and we can grow in relationships with one another. We launched our very first City Life Serve Day where we stopped everything for one day on a Sunday to go serve our community, to serve in the house, yes, but get outside of the house and serve in different locations. Many of you signed up, many of you came, and I'm so proud to have a church that is not just about us, but we are looking to change our world one moment at a time. We also had our first ever Friends Giving, where we opened up our church for many of you to be able to come, especially if you weren't able to go away to your family, or maybe you're an international student, or here you don't have family close. We opened up the church to have Thanksgiving together, and what a great day it was. We are not there yet, but as we wrap up the year in December, we've got many things to look forward to. Number one, we have a City Kids Jam on a Saturday that you do not want to miss. All people are invited, whether you have kids or not, they will lead us into worship, and it's a great time together. We start our Advent series all of December, and many of you do Advent at home. It's a great time that we get to discuss the joy and the hope, the expectation of Jesus being birthed on this earth, and it gets us ready for Christmas. Now, Christmas is a little different this year because it falls on a Sunday and we are going to have a Christmas Eve service that Saturday night that we want to invite you and your family to come. And then Christmas Day, we'll have via YouTube, via online, a devotion that I will be giving for that day for our church. Now, we mentioned every month a lot of the things that happen, but just highlighted a few. We have ongoing things that we always want to mention. Of course, our Connect classes where new people come in and get to connect. We have family meetups that Aisha Bellany, our wonderful children's director, has set up for our families to come together on Saturdays. Our men and women's ministries returned strong, and we also launched microgroups, which were gender-based groups to help encourage community around the Bible. YAM started their fourth Sunday lunches, so all of our young adults started gathering and going to a specific place to eat. We also added new members and many people to our serve team that were thankful for people to volunteer. Our campus ministry started real talk and began to see movement on campus again, which we're excited about. Our Sunday prayer team started meeting again. We have our starter blog and our great people that contribute to that in writing. And we added even new staff members to our church. So many things we were able to do, and that's just a small amount. As we bring this year to a close, I just wanna say thank you so much for all the ways that each one of you have given in 2022. Every single thing that we just talked about, it takes so much work and really it takes a whole village to pull off. And you, every one of you have given your time, your gifts and your finances to serve this house and this city. And we are very, very grateful for it. Even more important than that, I know God is honored and pleased with how you have done it and you've done it fully unto him. If you're looking for somewhere to give on this Giving Tuesday, there's so many great organizations we wanna encourage you to give to. We also believe this is good ground. We've been praying for and planning for 2023, and we know that God has something really significant in store for all of us. So we wanna ask you to join your faith with us for this next year as the Lord continues to grow us and bring his kingdom to Houston and to City Life. I'm really looking forward to being able to do this again next year to share all the things that God's gonna do in 2023.